Hello friends. In this lecture, I will discuss about one of the most important topics of steel structures. In any interview that you will face in your career, you will be definitely asked about this question. That is, what is shear connection and what is movement connection? Here you can see that I have shown two pictures to you. Pause the video and guess which one is shear connection and which one is movement connection. Are you confused? In next five minutes, I will clear all your doubts, and after five minutes, I will show some of the pictures. And by just looking at those pictures, you will be able to identify which one is shear connection and which one is movement connection. If you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and press the bell icon to stay updated. So let's get started. To differentiate between shear connection and movement connection, the first thing that you should know is shear stress distribution and bending stress distribution so let's say we have i section like this and i want to draw the shear stress distribution of this i section so consider the top flange first you already know that shear stress distribution for a rectangular section is parabolic like this similarly consider the bottom flange again the shear stress distribution is parabolic and consider only web so again in this case also the shear stress distribution will be parabolic above and below the neutral axis now what will happen at the junction of flange and web here you can see that the width of the section is getting decreased if you see at this section the width of the section is equal to the width of the flange but if you see at this section the width of the section is very less that is nothing but equal to width of the web so when you travel from flange to web the width of the section is getting decreased so what will happen to the shear stress distribution will it increase or decrease okay let's check you know that shear stress distribution of any section is given by f into a into y bar upon i into b where b is nothing but the width of the section so since your width of the section is decreasing so the shear stress will increase so here you can see that from flange to web the width the shear stress will increase like this so now you can clearly see that the shear stress is maximum at the web tau max so you can say that the maximum shear in any i section is taken by web and very less amount of shear is taken by the flange portion so from this you can say that if you want to provide a shear connection between a beam and a column then you should connect web of the beam with that of the column something like this here you can see that only web of the beam is connected there is some gap between the flange of this beam and the flange of this column so we can say that this connection is a shear connection and it will transfer only shear force now let's talk about the bending stress distribution of i section so consider i section like this having a neutral axis so for this i section the bending stress distribution looks something like this here you can see that the maximum bending is taken by the flange of the section and the very less bending is taken by the web portion so we can say that if you want to provide a movement connection then you should connect the flange of the beam with the column so something like this in this picture you can see that though the web is connected the flange is also connected with the column so this connection is a movement connection so with this simple step you can identify which connection is the shear connection and which one is the movement connection in the next few slides i will show you some pictures and you can pause the video and guess the type of connection
in this connection you can see that the beam is connected to the column through this end plate and the co the beam is welded to this end plate you can see that web is also welded and the flange of this beam is also welded so since both flange and web are welded you can say that this connection is a movement connection also the bolts are outside the flange of the section so it can transfer the movement by generating push and pull in these bolts something like this now let's talk about this connection here you can see that only web portion of this beam is connected to this column through this angle section so this connection is a shear connection what about this connection you can see that the beam is welded to this end plate and both flange and web is welded so you can say that this connection is a movement connection and also the bolts are outside these top and bottom flange of the beams so this one is definitely a movement connection what about this connection you can see that only web of the beam is connected to the column and there is a clearly a gap between the top flange and the bottom flange of the beam and column so we can say that this connection is a shear connection so guys that's all about this video if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to stay updated thanks for watching bye for now